people asked me to share some insight through Facebook Live, I said fine. <laughs> it takes a lot of time to put something like this together, but I do want to encourage you to use these amazing tools that are available to us, so then I better do it myself. So it is officially the first week of summer. So here in Southern California, that means it's hot and it's going to stay hot through October. Um, nothing compared to our neighbors in Arizona and Vegas, but uh, still, nonetheless, it's pretty hot. And during the summer, I like to take a little break from, I don't encourage everyone to do this, but I take a tiny break from networking and doing some things that take a lot of my time, and I focus on my business. And some people take time away from their business to enjoy their families and whatnot, but in our house, summer is a time to work. And so with that being said, I am super excited to talk to you about something that I've been working on, that our team has been working on, and it's all about utilizing your influence. And so the caption to this live is, become the expert, they said. So back in 2009, this is my journey to becoming the expert in my field. Back in 2009, I was starting my company not knowing how to start a company. And I leaned on the Inland Empire Women's Business Center to be that support in my very early years. And so I would meet with my business coach, uh, Nicole Kinney. I call her my guardian angel, but I would meet with Nicole Kenny and she would tell me, you need to become the expert in your field. Now I have some stats that I looked up because back then in 2009, becoming the expert in your field looks a little different than it does now. Just to put some things into perspective, in 2009, LinkedIn had three, I'm sorry, 7.7 .7 million users, okay? That was double from 2008 when they had 3.6 million users. And social media today came up with the thought that the reason it doubled in one year was because that was during the recession. So that was when people started looking for jobs. And at that time, LinkedIn was basically a place to go and be recruited and to find a job. So 7.7 .7 million users on LinkedIn. Facebook in 2008 had four, 54 million users worldwide, okay? Compared to MySpace at that time, remember my, MySpace? Compared to MySpace at 76 million users at that time. So look, so look at those numbers, 7.7 .7 million users on LinkedIn, 54 million users worldwide on Facebook, and MySpace is 76 million. At that time, Facebook was not a business tool. It was, it was still coming out of its college only audience, okay? So becoming the expert in my field in 2009, I said all that to say, Social media didn't play a huge part on that right away. What I knew I needed to do was to become an expert, I needed people to know what I knew. They needed to know that I knew what I was talking about. So I started a blog. And basically a blog was attached to my website, okay? And I would write articles about you know whatever came to my mind and I would publish them. I also started a monthly newsletter. And I remember thinking, if no one reads this newsletter, I'm still going to write it. If my mom and my grandma are the only two people who look at my newsletter, <laughs> I'm still going to write it. And this was me becoming the expert in my field. I started tweeting. I started connecting with people talking about social media. I talked to people talking about business, and this is how I infiltrated, you know, certain user groups. And I remember someone said, well, 
to be the expert in your field, you should also speak on the subject. And I said, well, at this point, no one's going to invite me to speak. They barely know me and all of that. So during those early years to become the expert in my field, I did a lot of in-person networking and I did an all, a lot of online brand building via my website, my blog, and email marketing and some social media, including LinkedIn, Facebook. At that time, yes, you could do a Facebook business page, but it was still very, very new. So become the expert in your field. Is that something that's changed since 2009? Is that not relevant anymore? The answer is no. It's still important to be the expert in your field. It's still important for people to think of you as a thought leader in your industry, to think of you as someone that they can count on, rely on, that you're credible, that you know what you're talking about, that you can help them. I don't care what industry it is, whether you are a consumer product, a business service, a government service, people need to know that they can depend on you and your knowledge is very important. So today, what does it look like to become the expert in your field? You have it a little easier today than I did in 2009, and I'm sure I had it easier than those who went before me, before, you know, before 1998, <laughs> when we really started using the internet and email. Um, at that time, yes, I was still in high school and you know, enjoying these new online tools. Um, but yeah, 2017, let me kind of give you the, the numbers now. Today, LinkedIn has over 450 million uh, users. Facebook has 234 million active users in Canada and the United States. So back in 2009, it was 54 million worldwide, and now it's 234 million. Facebook is the number one visited social media network, and it continues to just dominate. And I could go on and on about the benefits of Facebook, and you might say, are you an you know, do you work for Facebook? No, I actually don't. And to be honest with you, my favorite social media is Twitter. And Twitter has its, has its benefits uh, to show off and showcase your expertise. But the bottom line is, is that more people are using Facebook. And at one time, even as, you know, as late and early as Three to five years ago, I would sit down with new prospects and just colleagues and friends and peers that I would meet through Nabo, and they would say, I don't need to pay attention to Facebook because it's, I don't need to know what someone's having for lunch. And I, <laughs> it's very, you know, I, I hear that a lot still actually. And now, it's safe, it's safe to say that Facebook users are decision makers. They are on Facebook posting photos from their family, staying connected with their loved ones. They're even using it for their business. But decision makers, top level executives, business owners, small business owners, um, C-suite employees, they're using Facebook and Facebook knows this and so they have found ways to capitalize and to offer advertising and space and all of that fun stuff. But I say that not because I work for Facebook. I have no interactions with Facebook. I just know the value that it brings. And I actually did not even plan on saying that, but um, I really don't want you to lose that opportunity to showcase your expertise and utilize um, a Facebook business page. So become the expert in your field is still totally relevant, necessary, and it's the way to 
show that you are the right choice for whatever it is that you are selling, serving, or um, producing. Next, next on my list is becoming the expert in your field is one thing and not the only thing because we might meet a lot of people who are super smart and experienced in what they're doing, but do we like them? Do we want to work with them? Do we want to do business with them? So your social media and your any of your digital marketing efforts, whether it's your email newsletter, or your blogging, your PR, where you can showcase your personality and your community involvement and your team culture, all of these, all of these wonderful things show that people can like you and that people can trust you. Those points are still very valid. You, I mean, it's a very, um, it's traditional. People do business with those that they like, know, and trust, and that also has not changed. So becoming the expert in your field, people doing business with those that they like, know, and trust, none of those things have changed. What has changed is the way that we are able to communicate these things to our prospects and to the community. So that is why it's important to show your influence off. Let people know that you are the influential um, expert in your field and you do that easily through your marketing, your online marketing. Um, but it, that's not to say that it's not important to rely on the traditional uh, sales and, and marketing methods. So I'm still a huge um, proponent of networking in person. You need to join um, organizations like NAVO. I just see Shanae um, signed on. <laughs> you need to join organizations like NAVO, National Association of Women Business Owners. I've been a member for over five years. It's been amazing for my business. And there I've been able to connect with new people. And of course, that helps strengthen my influence. But what really drives it home is the fact that someone can leave after meeting me at an event, can go home and or go to their office and type in, okay, let's see, Margaret's talking about social media. Who is she? What is she all about? I feel comfortable that if they go online and search my company or search my name, they'll find some really fun stuff and they'll probably be compelled to call. They'll say, okay, she's networking, she's connected, and I'm not saying that, you know, to boast. I'm saying that because I've invested in my, um, my online presence. So that way people can know that I know what I'm talking about as it relates to <laughs> digital marketing. So now this takes me to a fun announcement that I have. And I started thinking about what is it that I bring to the table? I mean, sure, there's like a list of services that Socialize LA brings to the table, of course. But what is the bottom line? And the bottom line is that we help our clients to flex their influence. Every single client that we work for is amazing in their own right, in their industry, in the business community. And we are so excited to work with them and to help them with their online um, presence and, and all of that. But each of them are so amazing in what they do. And what they were missing was telling people and to show people what they knew and how they helped. And they were, most of them, a lot of them, were the best kept secret. And being the best kept secret is not something that you want to aspire to. It's not a compliment. <laughs> it's not a compliment in any way, shape, or form. Um, because in today's world, we all have something that we're competing against. So whether you have a direct competitor or you have an indirect competitor, you know, this is, this is going on a, on a tangent a little, but I was working with a, um, an apparel company and they're here in LA and they said, well, no one's doing what we're doing. They were doing all these um, very interesting things. And um, I said, that's true. 
but you have an indirect competitor in like anything else apparel. So someone needs to know that they need to buy your handbag versus buying someone else's, you know, backpack. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm explaining that right, but they might not be selling exactly what you are, absolutely, but we all have something that we're competing with, whether it's time, whether it's resources or need, but we are competing with someone. So it's important that we are not the best kept secret because if someone else comes out and is showcasing their amazing uh, creativity or their service or their product and just telling the story of why you need them and you're not, it's a no brainer. They're going to go with the person who's visible. So I teach in the social business plan course that you need to, well, you have to um, improve your visibility, credibility, and likability online. And now I am really excited to talk about our new hashtag, <laughs> flex your influence. I think this is so important. All of us need to flex our influence. And you're going to start seeing um, a lot more of me and it's going to these uh, tips or uh, these lives will be done through our Facebook group. So I will put that into the comments. Our Facebook group is a free community. It's us just talking digital marketing, what's working, what's not working and um, doing that together. And so you'll have me leading it. Um, you'll also have our team. We have eight amazing team members who will jump in and give their expertise because God knows they are amazing. And so we'll all be lending a hand. And so look for the hashtag, hashtag flex your influence. And I really look forward to just imparting the wisdom and the, um, just the bits of knowledge that I've picked up. I mean, it's 2017. I started this in 2008, 2009, um, and so much has changed. Things continue to change. We stay on the front lines of all of this stuff and um, to help our clients, to help our students. And so I wanna thank you for uh, being here with me today and Please let me know if you have questions. You can send them through us through Messenger, or again, I'm going to put our group uh, link into the comments so you can join and you can ask questions there and we'll ask them publicly. It, of course, if you have a more specialized need or you have a more specific need and you want to see how you can work with us, we are available to have that conversation as well. And I am just so excited to be here to help you. I want to be your social media resource, someone that you can trust, someone that you can ask those hard questions to. I was on, um, I was on a Zoom call with one of our students, because um, we do have the social business plan course, and today, and she said, oh, I feel so embarrassed asking this question. And I said, and I will keep her name, name you know, I won't let you know her name, um, but I said, this is a safe zone. I am your digital marketing doctor. And if I don't know what the problem is, I can't help you. And so I can't fix it. So we just laughed and, but it's true. It's, if you have the question, so does someone else, which is why we're going to be answering them publicly through our, through our group. But there are no dumb questions. It's, it's quite all right that you don't have all the answers. And, um, and that's it. So thank you again for listening. And um, I'm hoping that all of you have a great summer. Don't work as hard as I plan on working. Um, but do give your online presence a, a thought. Are you the influencer in your industry? And if you're not, there are things that we can do to remedy that. So thank you and have an awesome day.